and welcome to this week's Godly Play Story. On the day that became Easter, we remembered how the disciples came to the tomb and were surprised because the stone was rolled away. Mary Magdalene is the one who stayed longest. She's still holding the spice that she was going to use to help with the burial of Jesus, but Jesus was gone. And she was the first one that got to meet the risen Jesus. That same day, two of Jesus' friends were walking away from Jerusalem, talking about all the sad things that had happened. A stranger joined them and talked with them, reminding them about the things in their, in their stories and their traditions that had something to do with what happened. When they got to their home, they invited the stranger to eat with them. The stranger at the table took the bread and blessed it and broke it and shared it. And as they broke, he broke the bread, they noticed it was Jesus. Jesus disappeared, but the friends hurried back to Jerusalem to tell how they had recognized Jesus when he broke the bread. The disciples were in a locked room. They were afraid. Maybe someone would come and take them the way the guards had come and taken Jesus. Peace be with you, came the voice, and it was Jesus coming to be with them. Jesus ate a piece of fish and they talked. And then Jesus said, peace be with you again. They told Thomas the next day, Thomas had not been with them. I doubt it said Thomas. And why shouldn't he doubt it? Because their minds were stretching, stretching, stretching to know Jesus in a new way. Eight days later, they were in the locked room again. Peace be with you. Jesus came and showed his hands, the wounds, inviting Thomas to touch them. Thomas, all he could do was fall down at Jesus' feet and say, my Lord, my God, Jesus looked at Thomas for a long time and then said, You believe when you see, and blessed are you when you can believe without seeing. The disciples made the long trip away from Jerusalem back to the place they knew in their ch from their childhood and their youth, back to the Sea of Galilee. As they rested from their long trip, Peter sat there and thought, and then said, I'm going fishing. The others thought that was a good idea. They prepared the boat, and the boat put, they put the boat out into the water. The wind filled the sails and the boat took off. They had their nets with them, and they fished and they fished, but there were no fish. They fished all night long. In the morning, they saw a fire on the shore and someone standing there. Any fish? No fish. Put your nets in on the other side. Well, what did they have to lose? When they put their nets on the other side, the net was crowding, crowded with fish. John looked hard at the person on the shore. It's the Lord, he said. Peter jumped out of the boat. He swam as hard as he could towards shore. The others soon followed, lugging their full net of fish. Bring the fish, said the person on the shore. They got closer, they could see. It was Jesus. And Jesus had a fire ready, and he had breakfast ready, bread, 
and they also prepared the fish and then they ate together. Oh, they all, all felt right at home here with Jesus. Some of them walked together on the shore with Jesus. And then Jesus was gone. They were gathered together still in the Galilee on top of a grassy hill. Jesus was already there, and they all gathered round to hear him talking. He was saying something like, All authority is given to me in heaven and earth. What was that? What was he saying? Then he started talking about something they really, really didn't want to hear. Go into all the world and tell everyone this story. Tell them even this part. Show them how to be good disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, mother of us all. Oh, they felt so tired, thinking of going everywhere. And then Jesus said, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And Jesus told them to go to Jerusalem and to meet him there. Then he was gone. And as they traveled towards Jerusalem, they began to feel a little different. They weren't just followers. They were also leaders. They knew that they were not just like sheep. They were also something like shepherds. And it was now their job to have experiences of home for other people the way they had felt at home with Jesus in the Galilee. Back in Jerusalem, they were in together in their upper room and Jesus was there. They felt comfortable asking Jesus questions, and some of them may be a little silly, like, tell us, Jesus, when are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? It is not for you to know the times right now, Jesus said. Jesus took them out of the room through the streets of the city. They ended up on a grassy hill outside of the city walls, maybe close to the town of Bethany. Jesus put his arms up. He looked at each one and blessed them. Then Jesus withdrew and a cloud took him out of their sight. They stood looking there and they heard a voice People of Galilee, why are you gazing up into the heavens? Well, they did feel a little foolish. The two people dressed in white answered their own question. This was Jesus who has now gone as you once knew him. But you can go back and wait for the Holy Spirit to come. So they traveled back into the city, wondering what was this Holy Spirit and how would they know when it came? But they waited and waited and while they waited, they chose another disciple to take the place of Judas. It was Matthias and then they waited and waited some more, wondering how long they would have to wait for the Holy Spirit to come. So we're almost at the end of our Easter tide journey. And next time when I tell the story, we'll get to the hot place, the red hot place. 
So you still have a chance to find something in your household or make something that goes along with this story. And I don't know what you'll find to make, but you'll know when you find it. And I'm going to say, peace be with you. Peace of the risen Christ be with you.